you still got to even lay down and get you some rest mm. on a regular basis. I, I won't say every night because you might go one night without getting some sleep, <laughs> but I bet you hit that pillow pretty soon. Sure. <laughs> I bet you do. It don't matter. So that shows you in itself. It ain't no big deal with color. We just dealing with the facts. So now he said, Isaac entreated the Lord, and he was entreated, and Rebekah conceived, and, the, and she went to inquire the Lord because they was doing battle. They was fighting in the womb. And the Lord said, verse 23, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Pay attention to this. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other uh -huh. people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Okay, you got two different nations about to be born. And one going to be stronger than the other. And the elder, whoever the oldest is, that's the first one born. We're talking about twins, so it ain't that much bigger time difference. But the first one come out, that's the elder, right? He got to serve the younger. That's the way the Lord got it set. But we're going to find out it wasn't going to be that way all the time until you got to the end. In other words, the elder wasn't going to serve the younger period throughout all history it was going to come a time the elder was going to rise up on them for a while and that's where we at right now because we're going to see the elders esau but go ahead verse 24 and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled uh -huh. behold there were twins in her womb okay go ahead and the first came out red all over like an hairy garment see that show you the lord can have one woman have two have two babies and they can look totally different they can even be two different races happened back here when the Lord was creating races. And it can happen to this day. They got records of it happening to this day. But we talking about it was different nationalities being uh, born. So it said, now it gave you a description of the first. It said the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, right? That's how he looked, red. Like a hairy garment. And what they call his name? And they called his name Esau. And they called his name Esau. So he is the elder, right? He's the firstborn. So ultimately, Esau got to serve the next one that's about to come out, right? Ultimately. And that's the way the Lord said it. So you can't even get mad at nobody. This is the way the Lord said it. The Lord know what these boys going to be about even before they're born, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, out of the norm, which the norm is the, the younger serve the elder, right? But out of the norm, the Lord said the elder is going to serve the younger, right? That's what he said. Now, it told you Esau was red and hairy. That shows you it's a distinction. Why even describe him as red and hairy and don't say nothing about Jacob unless Jacob looked the norm, black? Because that's the way Jacob looked. Jacob, we know Jacob looked like the Egyptians and the other Hamites because you got all their association right here in the Bible. We saw Moses was in Egypt had to look like Pharaoh because Pharaoh didn't even know that was, he was a Hebrew in his own house. You know Pharaoh didn't know Moses was a Hebrew because he was killing the Hebrew boy. You think he would have let one live in his house? But since we know the Egyptians come from Ham and they are black, we know Moses was black. We know Joseph was black. See, they was black. It ain't no big deal. It's just a fact. But now, it described Esau as being different, didn't it? It said he came out red and hairy, right? Go ahead, verse 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau hill, uh -huh. and his name was called Jacob. Uh -huh. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. Okay, now then come Jacob. Didn't even go into no physical description because the people who was writing it, they knew it wasn't necessary as far as that time go. It wasn't even necessary. They described Esau. And then it said Jacob came out, so he was the younger. And Isaac, it told you he was 60 years old when, when they were born. But go ahead, 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, uh -huh. a man of the field. And Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Mm -hmm. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. Uh -huh. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Okay, now Isaac. Now, these, this, this both of their sons, Isaac was a little partial toward Esau, and the mother, Rebecca, was a little partial toward Jacob. I'm sure they both loved both of them. But still, that's the way it was. I, uh, Esau went out hunting and brought his father a lot of food. Hey, he liked that. 
Go ahead. And Jacob saw pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. Uh huh. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, uh -huh. for I am faint. Therefore was, I, was his name called Edom. Oh, now that's another name. You keep that in your mind, because that's prominent throughout the Bible. Another name for Esau is Edom. Matter of fact, that's the land, name of the land that the Lord allowed Esau to inherit. See, just like the Lord gave Israel land, Jacob, Jacob's name ain't going to be changed to Israel in the Bible. And they called Jacob's land the land of Israel. God gave him that. That was the promised land. But God also gave Esau land called the land of Edom. And it's just south of Israel's land. That's important to understand. Mm -hmm. It's just south of Israel's land. See, all these people lived around each other. So now. Jacob saw some pottage, and Esau was faint, and he wanted some of that pottage. Now, it's, so some, they're going to end up making a deal, but see, the Lord had already made the deal. The, already, the Lord had already told you how it's going to be. He said the elder is going to serve the younger. So now that's going to even play itself out with this deal they're going to make because technically Esau is supposed to get everything since he's the oldest. But let's see what happened. Uh, verse 31. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Okay, now Esau wanted some pottage. He was real hungry. Obviously, he didn't have a good day hunting that day. So he was real hungry, and Jacob had him some pottage, and he said, look, give me, give me some of that pottage. That's what Esau asked him. Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. So now Jacob said, sell me this day your birthright. Now, obviously, the birthright must mean something if it's worth buying and selling, right? That's right. Something got to come with it. <laughs> See, this shows you the Lord knew what type of character Esau was. And he chose Jacob over Esau before they were even born. The Bible tell you that, don't it? See, he knew what type of character Esau was. So now, let's see. He says, sell me your birthright, verse 32. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. Mm -hmm. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? See, that seemed a little dramatic. You ain't eight, just you didn't eat one day. You at the point to die. <laughs> but anyway, he just wanted some of that food that Jacob had. <laughs> but nobody is going to make him serve or uh, sell his birthright. He going to do that on his own, which he didn't have to do. But it just shows you how he was. He didn't have to sell his birthright. But he going to sell it because Jacob, hey, Jacob said, I ain't going to give you none of this pottage unless you sell it. Go ahead. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. Now, Jacob going to make him swear. Because see, all this from the Lord, because the Lord already said, Jacob, the elder, is going to serve the younger. Jacob is the younger. Go ahead. And he swear unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Now, he sold his birthright unto Jacob. So, therefore, whatever come with the birthright of being the firstborn... Esau don't get it no more, do he? Uh-uh, mm -mm. Jacob get it. But go ahead. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. So that finalized the deal. He swore and gave, sold him his birthright, and Jacob gave him what he promised to give him, right? Bread and pottage of lentils. Go ahead. And he did eat and drink uh -huh. and rose up and went his way. Uh -huh. Thus Esau despised his birthright. See, Esau despised his birthright. You know what that really means? That means he didn't care about it. It didn't mean nothing to him. See, sometimes you can show the Lord you despise something by neglecting it or not caring about it. You're just going to set it on the ground like it don't mean nothing. Then when it show up and it means something, now you're all upset. But, hey, you didn't care about it at first. You chose something else. How are you going to choose some food over your birthright? <laughs> but that's what he did, right? Mm -hmm. Now, go into the 27th chapter, 27 and 1. Because now something going to take place. A lot of people say, well, see, Jacob was wrong. He, he stole Esau's birthright and all. He stole the blessing, I mean. He stole the blessing. And they try to accuse Jacob of this. But I'm, I'm here to show you this is all from the Lord. Genesis 27. The Lord already said the elder going to serve the younger. The Lord called the shots before they was born. 27 and 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son uh -huh. and said unto him, My son, he and he said unto him, Behold, here am I. Now notice what, now Isaac is old, his eyes dim, he can't even see good, right? right. So now he's getting ready to do something 
And who do he call for? It said he called Esau his what son? Eldest son. His eldest son. Because that's the way they did things. They did things in order. They went by the eldest, right? So he called, quite naturally he called this eldest son. Because he is going to give his eldest son everything he got, basically. Go ahead, verse 2. And he said, Behold now, I am old. I know not the day of my death. He said, I don't know when I'm going to die. Go ahead. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison, and make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may, be, may bless thee before I die. Okay, so now, he told him to go hunting, find, get something, and bring it back, and bring it to me so I can eat it, and I'm going to bless you before I die. That's what he told. But now, the reason why he's telling them this, well, he was favored toward Esau a little bit, but Esau was the eldest, right? Mm -hmm. But we already know, which obviously Isaac didn't know, that Esau has sold off being the eldest, didn't he? He sold off the birthright of being the eldest to Jacob, didn't he? So if Esau was going to be right, Esau would say, well, you know, I know I was born first, but, you know, one day I was hungry, and I gave that right to my brother Jacob. So hold on, Dad. I'm getting ready to go get Jacob. He going to come in here. But that has been too much like right, right? See, Esau think he can, he can sell it on paper and still have it. What good, what good is his birthright if don't nothing come with it, right? But see, he didn't do that, did he? No. So it's going to make Jacob look like the bad guy, which Jacob didn't even want to do what he about to do here. His mother made him do it because his mother knew what the Lord said, too. She the one the Lord told. The elder going to serve the younger, right? So now, but Esau didn't do that. That would have been too much like, right, he going to just go along with the program. What verse you at? Five. Go ahead. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. Well, the women be listening to everything. So she heard Isaac. What? She heard Isaac tell Esau to go hunting and bring him something. He's going to bless him. And her antenna went up. She said, wait a minute. This ain't getting ready to happen. Go ahead. Now, it wasn't even Jacob that heard it. It was Rebecca, the mother. Go ahead. And Rebecca spake unto Jacob, her son, mm -hmm. saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, uh -huh. saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go ahead. Go now to the flock and fetch me some from this two good kids of the goats, uh -huh. and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. Okay, now she came up with this whole scenario. She told Jacob to do this. She said, you go to the goat, and you get a goat, and I'm going to fix it up for your father the way he like it, and we're going to do something right here. But now notice what Jacob said. What, Verse 10. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and that he may bless thee before his death. See, that's what Rebekah said. But Jacob said what at 11? And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father preadventure will fill me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. Uh -huh. And I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. See, now Jacob's supposed to get the blessing. The elder's supposed to serve the younger, but now nah, they're just trying to figure out how he's going to get it. Because Isaac obviously don't understand. And he old, and he is getting ready to give the blessing to the wrong one. He's getting ready to give the blessing to the wrong one. But even Jacob still didn't want to do it because Jacob said, look, that show you again the, 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 the physical description. Jacob said, told his mother, Esau is hairy, which we saw he was red and hairy, right? But now we find out Jacob wasn't as hairy, was he? The Bible said Jacob was a smooth man. 